If the ban were announced with a one-week notice, the bad would rush into our country during that week. So he says it's a ban. I mean, he's ban? using the, the words that the media is using. But at the end of the day, it can't... Hold on, hold on, hold on. It can't be... It can't be... Jonathan, thanks. I'll, I'll let Kristen talk. It can't be a ban if you're letting a million people in. If 325,000 people from another country can't come in, that is by nature not a ban. I understand your point. Though. It is but extreme. The president betting. himself called it a ban. I understand. Is what? he confused or are you confused? No, I'm not confused. I think that the words that are being used to describe it are derived from what the media is calling this. He has been very clear that it is extreme vetting. It seems to finish this broader sure. point, Sean, which Paul Ryan said today. I think it's regrettable that there was some confusion on the rollout of this. The House Speaker saying that. What do you say to Republicans who argue that this is a part of a broader issue with the I, President not enacting this policy <coughs> smoothly? Well, first of all, I, I think we've addressed that. That we could have either telegraphed this days in advance in which people could have gotten on planes and come over here which would have undermined the exact nature of what this sought to prevent. Or we could have done it in a way that inconvenienced some folks for a little while. Uh, can I answer the question? No, no, no. I, I, I do. There, there's clearly some confusion. But I think part of it, your network was one of the people that just hours ago told people that General Kelly was unaware of what's going on. And then moments later, he gets on air saying, here's how many times I can brief. So, if, I, I mean, with all due respect, I think you have been part of the confusion. You have helped cause this, despite claims to whatever. You claim that you have sources that tell us. General Kelly stands up and says, this is how many times I've been briefed. This is how many people are involved. And yet, you were out there for... I think there was a New York Times report that was cited. Okay, oh, okay. so I apologize that NBC News' is reporting is based on the New York Times' false reporting. But at the, at the end of the, how can it be accurate reporting, Glenn? If things can be true. Okay, so, so the, secret the Secretary of Homeland Security just stood up and so you're calling him a liar? He didn't say he saw the specifics. Jonathan, I'm talking to Glenn. No, I'm talking to I'm saying you. Said that he was, the, the report in the New York Times said that he was unaware of, of the ban. Sure, let me ask you a question. Hold on. I'm just, no, no, answer the question because you just called us. minutes you, ago, you stood at the podium and you reiterated something you said yesterday uh, about anyone who doesn't agree in terms of the career bureaucracy uh, should hit the road. I'm paraphrasing. Of course. You had a statement that President Trump made where uh, he accused the acting attorney general of betraying her own department by expressing a counter opinion. Don't you think that kind of language has a chilling effect on the public statements that your officials make? No, I, I think there's a big difference. Think about the process that worked it here. The Department of Justice's Office of Legal Compliance vetted the executive order, sent it back to us saying it was completely compliant. Then the acting attorney general goes out and says, I'm not going to enforce it. You tell me how that jives. I want to contrast the president's repeated uh, statements about Nordstrom with the lack of comments about some other things, including, for example, the attack on Quebec's uh, Quebec Mosque mm -hmm. and uh, other other similar environments. Why is the president, when he chooses to, do you, do you know? Hold on, before because you just brought that up. I literally stand at this podium and opened a briefing a couple days ago about the president expecting his condolences. I, I literally opened the briefing about it. So for you to sit there and I'm say, I, I know, so why are you asking why he didn't do it when I literally stood the here and did it? statement. Well, I don't understand what you're Kellyanne's asking. comment were, were about that the president doesn't have time to tweet about everything. Right. He's tweeting about this. Right. He's not tweeting about something else. I came out here and actually spoke about it and said the president Talk spoke. the president's time. What are you, a tw you're equating me addressing the nation here in a tweet? I don't, I mean, that's the silliest thing I've ever heard. Okay, I'm, this is silly. Okay, next. Okay, next. Okay, thank you. The language You've asked your question. Here. Thank you. Does that not diminish the thank language you. that you're using? Go ahead. Thank, thank you. So. In other words, the president I, will continue to speak like of this. Of course he will. The president's going to speak his mind. It goes back to Thomas Jefferson that presidents have commented on, on judicial nominees. I mean, the idea of one branch talking about or commenting on another branch is as old as our republic. So I, I don't know why, and, and I, I, I find it interesting when President Obama criticized the Supreme Court for its Citizens United comments in the State of the Union, there wasn't a similar concern about that. And there is the, the idea that this is a... so-called judge portion. I, I get it. I mean, look, attack. but at some point it's, it seems like there is clearly a double standard when it's how this is applied. When President Obama did it, there was no concern from this briefing room. When he does it, it's, you know, a ton of outrage.
Why isn't he? He is, I mean, he is free to speak his mind. Why, where has this outrage been for the last hundred years? And there has the been Obama administration or any previous administration. I'm talking about this president. I understand. And and the this president White has House. the part of the reason the president got elected is because he speaks his mind. He doesn't hold it back. He's authentic, and he's not going to sit back. I think when he feels very passionately about something as much as the executive order, he was doing it to make sure Americans were safe. The order, the U.S. Code, is crystal clear on this. I think I've read it for like three days in a row. And it can't be any clearer how much authority it gives the president to do what he can to keep it safe. He's concerned that he's doing what he can to keep this country safe, and, th and there's been a lot of activity to stand in the way. So I'm not sure how many more times I can read the code to you, but 8 U.S. Code 1182... Yeah, are, I, talking about it is not how the judicial process works. I, I, uh, thank you. You've asked the question now eight times. One more. I'd like to ask you one, excuse me, one more got, about a different I understand, set of hold on, comments. I'm, I'm, I understand. Thank you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Are, uh, your answer about the context... Yeah. doesn't make sense when you think about what Senator Ben Sass said today and this morning on TV. He said that he asked Judge Gorsuch uh, specifically about the president's so-called judge tweet, and in response... Phil, this is like the, the judge, fourth time I've asked an answer. No, but this like, is a different context. I, I understand that, Phil. I, I've it, asked... It's directly I, about... I, I understand that, and I've said exactly what Senator Ayotte said about it. I don't know how many times you can ask... Yeah. It was only about... Sean, I understand. Paul. Thank you. Crystal. Sean, thank you. A couple of questions. Yeah. I want to go back to that draft executive order that would undo some of the restrictions for handling detainees. Has the president seen that draft EO? I'm sorry, the one that he's Has signing? He seen it? No, no, the draft executive order that Watch. would undo the restrictions on how to handle detainees. I, I guess I, I'm having a hard time. You're asking me if a document that's not a White House document he's seen. I don't believe to the best of my knowledge. And so I, I would ask, There's a, a. this is the second day in a row we're getting asked about documents that are floating around and people saying, and, and frankly, reports being published attributing documents to the White House that are not White House documents. No, and I haven't attributed No, no, I'm not saying you. I'm, I, 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 do you know if he's seen it? I, to the best of my knowledge, he hasn't seen it. I think he's got a lot of other Since things. Since it is floating around, I, I, I have a couple more questions. Okay. You get one more. Let's Since not it is, I have two more. Since it is floating around, okay. is he considering uh, Kristen, don't, that this is a, black sites no, and I'm not going to start answering hypotheticals about Since documents that are floating around. That's a ridiculous, you're basically, okay, Kristen, we're going to end this right there. Hunter, 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 no, Hunter Walker, thank you to run special operations ground missions um, against suspected terrorists in the wake of the recent raid there that claimed so many civilian lives. Does that not undercut the administration's ability to fight terrorism in that region? And do you stand by your assessment that it's a success? Absolutely. Well, I'll take the last one first. It's absolutely a success. And I think anyone who would suggest it's not a success does disservice to the life of Chief Ryan Owens. He fought knowing what was at stake in that mission, and um, and anybody who would suggest otherwise doesn't fully appreciate how successful that mission was, what the information that they were able to retrieve was, and how that will help prevent future terrorist attacks. I understand that. I think my statement is very clear on that, Kristen. I think anybody who get, who undermines the success of that rage owes an apology and a disservice to the life of Chief Owens. I, 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 hold on, Kristen, can I answer the question? I'm answering the question. Please let me finish. The raid, the, the action that was taken in Yemen was a huge success. American lives will be saved because of it. Future attacks will be prevented. The life of Chief Ryan Owens was done in service to this country, and we owe him and his family a great debt for the information that we received during that raid. I think any suggestion question otherwise is a disservice to his courageous life and the actions that he just took. Full stop. With respect, I'm sorry, what was the first part? Is, is that your message to Senator John McCain? That's my He's message to anybody who says that. Anybody. I just, I, I don't know how much clearer I can be, Kristen. Hunter Walker. Um, in, the, in that lunch meeting, uh, the president um, said that, you know, he, he basically said Senator Blumenthal's comments were taken out of context. And that well, Judge, no, Judge Gorsuch's Gorsuch comments, right. yeah. And that his relaying of Judge Gorsuch's comments were taken out of context. However, right. Senator Ayotte, who is working with the White House to help shepherd uh, Judge Gorsuch through the mm -hmm. Hill, released a statement confirming those same remarks, disheartening and demoralizing. Right. So, so here's what Senator... Was the President aware of that? Because yeah, she was in that meeting. No, no, I, of course he's aware. This is what Senator Ayotte said. Judge Gorsuch had made it very clear in all of his discussions with senators, including Senator Blumenthal, that he could not comment on specific cases mm -hmm. and that judicial ethics prevent him from commenting on political matters. 
he has also emphasized the importance of an independent judiciary. And while he made clear that he was not referencing any specific case, mm -hmm. he said that he finds any criticism of a judge's integrity and independence disheartening and demoralizing. Right. So there is a big difference between commenting on the specific comments that have been made in the tweets and his general philosophy about the judiciary and his respect for his fellow judges. That's but and I think the senator's comments were very clear about how that those are two distinct issues. Right. And the judge's right. comments as relayed through others were, were also in that context of the president's attacks on the judiciary, which is what the senator as you just read out was also talking about right. there. Okay, so was the president aware of that? Because Senator Ayotte was sitting right across from him when he said that those comments weren't accurately reported no, I, or No, the way you know, the way that Senator Blumenthal characterized him, he was talking about the tweets and saying that he was his heart. That's not what the judge said. He was making two very complete, distinct arguments about how he views the the comments that he should not be uh, commenting on a political matter or on specific things. But as a whole, he doesn't like attacks in general. On the judiciary, it was a very distinct argument that he was making, and I think that that's where I think we've got to be clear, and that's what Senator Ayotte was saying this morning. Very, very different, but Cecilia. Do you take that on board? I mean, does he what? Does he, is he taking that on board? I mean, you just said he doesn't regret his past attacks on the judiciary, right? But now you have these confirmed remarks, which you were saying were exactly what the judge was talking about. No, no, and the, that's but, not but, hold changing on. the But uh, again, um, I think it's important to understand. That the, the, the judge was very clear that he was not commenting on any specific matter, right? And then he was asked about his general philosophy. So you can't then take that, equate it back to the, to the specific. He literally went out of his way to say, I'm not commenting on a specific instance. So to take what he said about a generalization and apply it to a specific is exactly what he was intending not to do. But in other words, the president I, will continue to speak like of this. Of course he will. The president's going to speak his mind. It's, it goes back to Thomas Jefferson, that presidents have commented on, on judicial nominees. I mean, the idea of one branch talking about or commenting on another branch is as old as our republic. So I, I don't know why. And, and I, I, I find it interesting when... President Obama criticized the Supreme Court for its Citizens United comments in the State of the Union. There wasn't a similar concern about that. And there is the, the idea that this is a so-called judge portion. I, I get it. I mean, look, attack. but at some point, it's, it seems like there is clearly a double standard when it's how this is applied. When President Obama did it, there was no concern from this briefing room. When he does it. It's, you know, a ton of outrage. So I, I just, with all due respect, I think the president's made very clear that he was concerned about how that executive order in particular, which is what we're talking about, was applied. And I think we've addressed it from this briefing room over and over and over again, that the U.S. code gives the president very clear authority to make this happen. Then the acting attorney general goes out and says, I'm not going to enforce it. You tell me how that jives. Because at the end of the day, if the acting attorney general has an office under her jurisdiction, that says that something is legal and compliant, and then she gets out there and says, I'm not going to enforce it, that doesn't sound like an attorney general that is upholding the duty that she swore to uphold. Well, she so, uh, can I, that, that at the end of the day, then she should step down. But at the end of the day, the, the attorney general either had a problem with her own division approving something, but it wasn't the president she had a problem with. The president followed the process sought feedback, went through the interagency review, had other departments sign off, despite the reporting that said it was otherwise. He got, hold on, guy. Betrayal, David. That's a very hard word. Why don't we just, let me answer Glenn, so we can be polite now, huh? And what, what the answer is that we went through the process. The Office of Legal Compliance came back and said, this is a compliant executive order, it's fully legal, and it, it can be executed. So then for the Attorney General to turn around and say, I'm not going to uphold this lawful executive order is clearly a dereliction of duty and she should have been removed and she was so that, that I mean I, I just it, it is odd to me that we're having a discussion about somebody whose job it is to execute lawful orders who chose not to do it hold on who chose not to do it and then we're questioning whether or not we were right to remove her that's the right thing to do and if you looked at the, the folks from the right and the left constitutional scholars this morning they said we might not agree with some of the policies or the or, or the political uh, or, or the party of the president, but he was right to do this. He had well, every right. Use word, why use the word betrayal? Yeah. Because the Which department's are... job is to execute. I mean, they're the Department of Justice. And if you have a legally executed order and the, the attorney general says, I'm not going to execute it, that truly, that clearly is a betrayal of what she's supposed to. I'm not going to define the word, Glenn. Yeah. Uh, Sean. Uh...